Welcome to the February 20th, 2024 special Board of Education meeting. Um, start by asking the audience and board members to please silence their cell phone and computers. Um, and then join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Hatfield, can you take a roll, please? Absolutely. Uh, President Rausch. Here. Vice President McFarland. Here. Secretary Hatfield is here. Treasurer Lauterbach is not here this evening. Member Blasey. Here. Member Ringgold. Here. Member Horwitz. Present. All set. All right, thanks. Uh, item number two on the agenda is request to address the board um, for the purposes of this special meeting. So, Mr. Anita Bonadies, you're on, on deck. Good evening. I've mentioned Freedom of Information Act, MCL 15.234, in several of the previous meetings. I've questioned fees, accounting for time to produce FOIA information, and the compliance with the law. MPS determines when it makes what it wants to charge a requester and a fee, and when there will be no charge, but not a consistent policy. In Section 3, it states, a fee as described in Subsection 1 shall not be charged for the cost of search, examination, review, and the deletion and separation of exempt from non-exempt information as provided in Section 14, unless failure to charge a fee would result in unreasonably high cost to the public body because of the nature of the request in the particular instance, and the public body specifically identifies the nature of these unreasonably high costs. I have never been given an explanation of the nature of these unreasonably high costs in any of my FOIA requests. I have requested a waiver several times because my request is in public interest, but I have always been denied that waiver. I post and make the FOIA information I receive available to the general public, especially the agenda packets. Section 4A, labor costs under this subsection shall be estimated and charged in increments of 15 minutes or more with partial increments rounded down. It makes it clear that there is to be actual accounting of the time spent fulfilling the request and that the pre redacting time is to be rounded down if it is a partial 15 minute increment. I am always just billed the balance of the original estimate. There is no actual accounting of time. It is like getting an estimate on a project and being told to pay the balance when done with no accounting for actual cost. This is not how it is to work, but MPS continues to do this. Section 4B, for services performed by an employee of the public body, the public body shall not charge more than the hourly wage of its lowest paid employee capable of separating and deleting exempt information from non-exempt information in the particular instance of provided in Section 14, regardless of whether that person is available or who actually performs the labor. The HR director told me that she is the lowest paid at 52.47 an hour employee capable of separating and redacting the data I'm given. Just because she doesn't does it doesn't mean she is the lowest paid capable employee. Again, the public body must specifically identify the nature of these unreasonably high costs to even charge a fee. Otherwise, it should be free and part of community service and public relations. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bonadies. Uh, anybody else at this time wish to address the board on the purpose of the special meeting and then we will reconvene for our regularly scheduled board meeting. Okay, we will close the floor at this time. <clears throat> at this time, um, item number three is Board of Education Matters presentations to the board. Um, and the slate of candidates from HYA. And then that is part of closed session, so we'll re. Um, yep. John? All right, I will move that we enter closed session to review the sp specific contents of employment applications for superintendent position pursuant to section 8F 
of the Michigan Open Meetings Act, MCL 15.268-8F, due to request for applications to be kept confidential. Motion by Hatfield, support by Horowitz. Any discussion on the motion to move into closed session uh, to review the applications in a confidential manner? Roll call vote. Okay. All right. John, if you can do a roll call. Absolutely. Uh, President Rausch? Yes. Vice President McFarland? Yes. Secretary Hatfield is yes. Uh, Member Blazy? Yes. Member Ringgold? Yes. Member Horowitz? Yes. All right, unanimous. All right, thank you. So at this time, we'll move into closed session to review all of the candidates, and then when we come out, we will make the selection for candidates to interview. So, thank you. Okay, um, I thought I'd start just informing the public of what's been presented to the board, which is um, we received 19 completed applications. Um, 10 candidates are from the state of Michigan. Nine candidates are from out of state, um, which was what we tried to attract with our national search. Uh, of the 19, three candidates have hold their application or withdrew. Um, and then six candidates had started an application but did not complete or submit their application uh, through HYA. All of those applications were due Saturday, Mike, is that correct? Uh, I believe, yes. Saturday, so we've had a chance as a board to see their applications through uh, the HYA portal. Um, read about each candidate's background and their vision for the district. Um, so now, we as a board need to deliberate um, on who we would like to see for an interview and why. Well, really, why do we wanna see certain candidates for interviews based on what we've put out as criteria, inclusive of the uh, comments from the public through our um, district profile and open sessions uh, with the public and their community input. Um, so we have numbered the candidates uh, just with a, a number to indicate uh, who they are in our portal to keep their names confidential until we select. And then as soon as we select uh, who we wanna see for an interview, that's when those candidates' names go public um, other applicants not selected for an interview would stay confidential. Um, so at this time, I think um, maybe it's best just to discuss how we want to do this. Um, I have, I think each of us have read through all of the applications, probably made our own personal notes, um, and looking for suggestions on how we want to proceed. Um, if there are, we can do this a couple different ways. We can eliminate some candidates that don't look like they fit um, and work our way down that way or just talk about ones that we want to select. So suggestions from the board. Do we want to first discuss what our goal number of interviewees may be so we know what we're looking for? <clears throat> Yeah, that's a good good start. So in our calendar, we have two dates set up at the end of February, a Monday and a Wednesday, um, slated for interviews. So we had kind of left ourselves with uh, 
room for up to six candidates, but um, we, we don't need to interview six. Um, my thought is that we, if, if we don't think that somebody's going to be selected as the superintendent, I don't think that we should spend their time and resources to interview. Um, so I would say potentially up to six, but we shouldn't just do six because we have six slots. Does that make sense to? Yes. Um, okay. Do anybody, does anybody have like certain uh, rubric or matrix that they're thinking about in their head that we should, would, should discuss before um, working through each of the candidates? And obviously we went through what we wanted to see in a candidate earlier, but um, any other comments? Yeah, and I think HYA has you know, been true to what we wanted in terms of uh, <coughs> putting, the, putting the posting together, um, searching for candidates, and uh, the conversations that Mike uh, conveyed that he's had with the candidates already. Yeah. Okay. Um, so maybe um, what we should do then is we've got a code sheet that translates numbers 1 through 16 to each of the candidates. Um, I'm going to start maybe with candidates that we should consider eliminating and work from there. Is that everybody good with that? So um, let's start with uh, 16. And I'll work from there. Does anybody have any concerns about eliminating Number 16. Um, number 15. Fourteen. Yeah, I would just say on fourteen, not a ton of, not maybe experience that we're looking for yet. Um, number thirteen. Leadership experience thus far is only one year as a principal, right? So, um, number 12. Currently a principal, previously a superintendent, but any issues with 12? Nope. So this is very hard for the public to watch this, <laughs> right, because it seems very cumbersome and clumsy, but we have to be very careful, careful. about characteristics yeah. and what we're saying, Yeah. yeah. Uh, because we cannot disclose who these individuals are. So as weird as it looks sitting there and, and, and watching us just say a number, it's there is a rhyme behind the reason. That's just not right. Uh, Try to be very, very careful, careful about <laughs> yes. using the... And once we make the selections, it will become public. Yes. 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 Okay. Number 11. Uh, just an experience issue. Yeah. 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 Very small school district currently. Mm -hmm. um, 
number 10. Again, no superintendent experience. Right. Only a principal so far, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. The other thing I want to add, too, is that if they only had principal or assistant principal experience, I did look for district office experience. And so most of the ones that you eliminated, although they have been a principal or an assistant principal, they have not had district level experience. And that number 10 would fall into that yep. category with no district level experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, number nine. Yeah, did anybody Google this one? No, I just opened the okay. the cover one. Yeah. I did, and there were a, a, a pretty major event happened. That yeah, happened. just on January 26th of this year, this person no resigned. This yeah. Oh. And it, there's really no information as to why this sudden and abrupt okay. yeah. resignation. So I think the dust needed to settle on that one. Um, Number eight. A lot of diverse experience. Mm -hmm. in multiple parts of the country. Uh, look, I didn't see any real, yeah. I don't know, I didn't see continuity. Yeah. It was like no. trying different things on different sides. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So that, that one talked a lot about having a home 90 miles away from here and was look, didn't seem like that person was going to be very involved in the community. Um, number seven, just double check. Um, very small, very little experience. Right. Very small district. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, number six. Mm -hmm. Yes. I would like to see an yes. interview for Where candidate six. So, um, just to describe the candidate a little bit, a lot of previous high school principal experience as well as what Mike was referring to, district office experience currently in a large district. Um, okay. So number six is uh, potential final interview yep. selection. Mm -hmm. uh, number five. Again, a strong plan. Yeah. Lots of experience. Yeah, my my concerns on number five were superintendent in a rural school district with about a thirty million dollar budget, so um, maybe twenty five, well, twenty seven percent the size of Midland, um, and then wanted to live near family in Ohio, and was concerned about you know, the proximity to. Ohio from Midland mm -hmm. um, for one, but then um, uh, any any other comments on I don't know. I just I <laughs> I wasn't nothing nothing about his his writing impressed me. Nothing really made me pause and say, oh, yeah, that, that sounds like something we need here. Mm -hmm. yeah, my overriding concern would be the willingness to stay. To stay. Right. right. Longevity. longevity. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of things in the works, and longevity, in my opinion, is going to be yep. very, very critical um, moving forward. Okay. So to that end, I would I'm okay with eliminating yes. number five. I support that. Anybody have any concerns with that? Mm -hmm. 
Um, number four. Agree. Agreed. I'd like to see number four. Or potential. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, number three. Uh, yes. They're also a strong candidate. Very strong candidate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any concerns with number three? No, not for me. Okay. Uh, number two. I don't know that number two matches the qualifications that we're looking for. Yeah, I agree. A lot of great experience in public school but at or the state board of education level not yes. public school board of education level yes mm -hmm. in communities um <clears throat> and then number one i thought as a up-and-comer an amazing candidate that has shown great leadership potential at the elementary and high school principal levels but no district experience mm -hmm. and somebody that is probably probably somebody that we should take a look at is getting into a district office in mm -hmm. MPS but not as superintendent was yeah. my was my reaction their experience is in a smaller <coughs> much more rural school mm -hmm. so I think we need a couple of different areas mm -hmm. of more experience yes. mm -hmm. Any final comments or concerns, consideration? Do we need to talk about how we get to the how we're going to interview? Right. Like it's one day. Um, we can either do that now or we can do it after we make a motion on who we're gonna select. Either Maybe to yeah, let's do it after. Let's do it after. Maybe to keep it clean yep. we, okay. yes. while it's fresh in everybody's head. Yes. What we uh, does anybody want to make a motion for Brad? Were you say something? I was just going to make a comment because <clears throat> I had made a point early in this process that I wanted this to be open to the non-traditional candidate as well. I was a little bit disappointed that we didn't get any uh, non-traditional candidates. These are all coming through the peer education path, but it, it's a superintendent job and it, it really reflects a lot of educational background as well. And it, it didn't appetize to somebody and that's fine. And HYA had it open to a non-traditional candidate. We just didn't get any uh, anybody that applied that was not really from a non-traditional path. And, it is what it is. It, mm -hmm. We did a national search. We, we put it out there, and it didn't look like, you know, really solid educational people want to be here to do this job. Yeah. It, we, we definitely did our, our due diligence on this. Um, we, 23, 20, 22, 23 um, community forums mm -hmm. um, seeking input and uh, the online opportunities to comment, uh, reviewing all the applications, uh, which meant were quite extensive. Uh, so I, I think I, I'm comfortable with where we came down. Um, and I thought we got a great diverse slate of candidates. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, we did. Someone just went right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Uh, so I, I don't know what the motion looks like, but I, I guess I will move that we invite candidates six, four, and three for an interview or to continue on in the interview process. I support. So motion by McFarland, support by Hatfield. Um, and 
any discussion or questions? I don't think so. I think we already had our discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, all in favor of moving forward to invite candidates three, four, and six to uh, interview, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries six zero. Good with me reading the names now. Yep. So <clears throat> let me. Uh, I'll pull up their current role too. So. Public has. Candidate number three is Patrick Malley, who is current chief academic officer at Bay City Public Schools. Um, candidate number four is Penny Miller Nelson, current interim superintendent at Midland Public Schools. And then candidate number six is Antoine Reed, who is currently the Deputy uh, Chief of Equity at Rockford, Pub Rockford, Illinois Public Schools. Um, so that is our slate. Patrick Malley, Penny Miller Nelson, and Antoine Reed. Uh, for this for discussion, um, Mike, in terms of interviews, we had set aside, and make sure I get my calendar Today's, correct. Uh, was February Next week. 2 on one night and yeah. one on another. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And they're anticipated to be 45 minute interviews? Or an hour. Exactly. To an hour. hour. For an hour. Yeah. Okay. And we started at 5.30. Yeah. So we would have plenty of time to. And then Mike, remind us, um, we have an opportunity for the public to give their feedback on how the interview went as well, that correct? Would be for the day in the district? Yep. You would, you would, they would have, they're going to uh, be able to give feedback to the board as to what they liked about each person and what would concern them if that person were hired. Okay. Yeah. And keep in mind in Michigan, the first round of interviews and the final rounds must be done in open, open session. session. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is anybody opposed to just doing all three interviews on the 26th, starting at 5.30? I think it's a good idea. Anybody opposed to covering travel expenses for the candidate? Yep. Okay. And that's Monday evening? Monday evening, the 26th, starting at 5.30. Okay. In here. Does the Wednesday meeting go away then? Right? It goes away. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Unless you need to deliberate or discuss more, but do we, um, keep, do we yeah. deliver in the open session? Yes. Yeah. So then maybe we keep it on the calendar. Just yeah. in case it goes Otherwise, really long or something. Yeah. Yeah. You may need yeah. to sleep on it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, meeting is at 5.30 as well, right? Correct. Okay. okay. So would the, our current interim superintendent need a day in the district? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, because mm -hmm. it's public have to stuff. In front of the okay, that's what I mean. The students, mm -hmm. the staff. Mm -hmm. They're going to ask her questions as well. Mm -hmm. 
that they're going to get feedback to the board. Yep. So is that a series of interviews at different buildings? How does so that what, work? A, a typical day in the district would be um, there would be at least three school tours. So they would get into at least the elementary school, middle school, and high school. Um, and then the, the individual, the, the meet and greets or slash interviews typically would be with uh, a group of students. It would be with the administrative <coughs> team. It would be with uh, staff after school. It would be parents in the evening. And then sometimes there's another group or two throughout the day, depending if you have business partners or if you have another specific group you would like identified to do the meet and greet or interview as well. And Mike, what's our role in the day in the district as a board? Very little. Okay. Um, so you don't, the only thing boards have done is, is maybe at lunch, maybe take them out for lunch uh, or dinner. Uh, it, it depends on the time, how it works. Because in some, some days in the district, uh, lunch will be at the high school while they are meeting with students. Um, that would be the time for a sandwich. And there might only be 45 minutes between 5 and 6 o'clock where they don't have time to go out, but they're going to bring a sandwich in or something in. Um, some districts want to allow an hour, hour and a half for lunch and give a little tour of the community, and that's where maybe a board member or two would, would participate in that as well. Okay. The tours of the school are, are typically done by the principal, and that becomes a pretty good interview as well where the principal can see how the conversation goes. Is the person asking about instruction? Or is the person talking to students when they see students in the hallway? Are they greeting other staff members? So the principal is going to be able to observe all that with all three and then give board feedback as well. How is feedback gathered from the day in the district? So we have a QR code or a link and anyone that participates in, in the meet and greet or the sessions will be able to log in and, and type in, and that response will go to a spreadsheet into the board portal. Okay. So you, as they're typing it in, you will actually see the responses coming in. Okay. And okay. we only ask two questions. We only ask, you know, if this person were hired, what would excite you? What would the, what strengths would this person bring to Midland? Or if this person were hired, uh, what would concern you if this was the next superintendent? We do not have them rank. It's the board's hire. And the other issue with ranking, you would have to go to all three in order to rank. And so where it gets a little bit tricky, we'll talk about this after the next round of interviews, some districts will give one person the full day, and it's just one person that, that day. They get their own special day. Other districts will have all three come in on the same day, and there's a rotation. So here's the drop, so pros and cons. So it, it's nice when they all get one full day because it's, it's their day. And they can really get into the district and not have to be intimidated by having the other two people there. Drawback of that, it would be three separate days or interviews or meet and greets. So the student group, we, want, we would want the same student group it would be three days for the student yeah. group. That's it would be three nights for the best. parents. It would be three days after school for the staff. And that mm -hmm. gets a little bit tricky. If they all come on the same day, there is some separation. So we would do the tours, for example. One person would be at the elementary school, another person would be at the middle school, another person would be at the high school, and then we rotate. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we would set up different groups. So one group would be the student group, one group could be administration, and one we would have another group. And again, they would rotate. And then where it gets a little bit hard is at night, we need to figure out that parent component. So if there's only maybe two other groups at night, maybe someone has a buy or a break, um, and then just a two, two group rotation. Um, other districts have done the board final interview that night. I don't like that because they can be coming off a community, uh, 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 and, and it could it not get heated, but there could be some strong dialogue about testing or, because these people are going to research these candidates, their districts, and they may ask questions about, uh, I see your test scores are so-and-so, and, and then 
that they go from that to the board interview, it, it's tough. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I like the board interview on a separate night. Okay. It's another trip back to the district for the candidate, but it, or you can do it the next day too as well. I mean, but it's it's got to be. I think they should have they should be fresh no, when they have their story. final interview with the board. Right. Yes. Yeah. Let's yes. Let's get through the interview process and we'll figure out if we have three or not. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 To do then, the day in the district. To do the day in the yeah. district and then we can balance it at that point. If yeah. it's if it's still three, that's one decision. If it's two, that's a different decision. Yeah. 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 Agreed. Yeah. And more and more districts are going to the one day. Okay. okay. Any other points of clarification for the special meeting? Not for me. Take a motion to adjourn special meeting. Uh, move that we adjourn the special meeting. Support. Motion by Hatfield, support by McFarland. All in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 Stand adjourned. Okay.